Well, it's official. Silicon Valley Bank's parent company is filing for bankruptcy. Obviously, this is kind of the headlining news today. And well, in, in, in a lot of ways, it doesn't impact crypto at all. In fact, the the first ripple or the first domino to fall, Silvergate, was kind of what cascaded Bitcoin into this recent rally. I mean, we're talking about Bitcoin being up 32 percent since the first domino fell. But with that said, we've got a lot of things to talk about in today's video outside of even just what's happening with banks, um, because outside of what's happening with Signature, what's happening with uh, what happened with Silvergate, what's happening with SVB, um, what's happening with now with First Republic and what's happening with Credit Suisse. So there's there's a lot more banks right now teetering on uh, or or tiptoeing on the very thin ice right now. So we've got some things to talk about there with the recent injection that the Fed's printed another $300 billion. So that's fantastic for devaluing the U.S. dollar. And, you know, on top of that, we've got news as far as Polygon, Polygon's co-founder leaving Polygon, what it means to the ecosystem, how it's going to impact it, what he's doing. Uh, and uh, the Shiba Inu community has really been toughing it out over the past week, week or two now, as far as some recent FUD that's been created around the ecosystem. Now, there's recently, obviously, when there's FUD, usually BitBoy Crypto has finds his way one way or another to weasel his himself into the FUD situations. But this is a situation where uh, BitBoy is going and doxing the one of the, I think, the founder or one of the co-founders of Shiba Inu. Um, and how Arthur Hayes believes a Bitcoin will also reach a million dollars. There's a lot of people that said they believe Bitcoin will reach a million dollars by 2030. So we've got a lot to cover in today's video, a lot to go over. If you're new here, my name is Alex. We talk about crypto, crypto news, crypto passive income. If you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing. Enjoy the video. Smash up the like. Without further ado, let's jump in the video. So obviously, when it comes to predictions, everyone's going to have their own prediction, right? Whether Bitcoin's going to be at 10K, whether Bitcoin's going to be at 100K by the end of the year, nobody knows. Nobody, nobody knows, right? But, you know, a lot of people are going to look at this and, you know, a lot of people, this obviously is taken from May of last year. But when you consider the fact that when Bitcoin was at 15, 5, 16,000, 17,000, 18,000, a lot of people just sat on the sidelines because they're like, I'm, I, I think it's going to go down to 12K or I think it's going to go down to 4K. And, and they didn't get in. And those are the same people complaining right now when they watch a video talking about Bitcoin going to 30K because they're the same people that are possibly still sitting on the sidelines, think, wishing as to how they could have gotten in at 15, 5 or 16K when it was talked about and they they just wanted to wait till they could get in at 12k and, and now they missed the entire run up opportunity so realize that yes the there's an aspect of time in the market versus timing the market but don't be the person that waits until bitcoin's at 60k um obviously it's really up to you what you want to do but this is a perfect representation of everybody will line up when things are good when bitcoin's up 32 percent but no one wants to be in, in the first to the door when, when bitcoin's much lower but with that said there's uh, a lot of things happening right now where it comes to the shiba inu community one of the biggest winners in as far as meme coins or all coins in general of the last bull market was by far shiba inu i mean doge had its run doge did very well but in comparison, as far as the return potential, Shiba Inu was just blew Doge out of the water. Now, recently, well, BitBoy Crypto always finds himself in some controversy, whether he's on the wrong side or on the right side of the controversy. Either way, regardless, it's come to the doxing of the Shiba, Shiba Inu uh, founder, uh, according to at least this video. And, you know, when you look at where the a lot of FUD has been around the Shiba Inu community, and so it, as of the last 24 hours, the burn rate has just automatically just insanely increased. Now, as to whether this was orchestrated in order to kind of burn Shiba Inu in order to increase the price alongside of when all this FUD came out, I don't, I don't know. No one really knows. But seeing that the burn rate increased by 10,960% in the last 24 hours, is kind of insane 
Um, so I know if you're a huge Shiba Inu fan and you've maybe made a lot of money with Shiba or you just enjoy the ecosystem and you think it's a better version of Doge, obviously the last couple of weeks, week and a half or so has been quite difficult. But for those of you maybe not familiar, that's kind of what's a lot of the fun that's been around the ecosystem is uh, kind of the, the people about and who is all involved. Uh, the much-awaited launch has been responsible for the recent spiking the price of Shiba Inu. There's been FUD surrounding the blockchain, and the developers have replicated Renia, a separate project. So this is why a lot of people are saying, hey, Shiba Inu is not its own thing. It's just a copy and paste. So that's where a lot of that FUD started. It's where BitBoy Crypto got involved, and, and that's kind of where things are right there. Now, Something on a very positive note, and maybe not positive if you are the losing better here, but this is something I did a YouTube short on this um, about not, uh, a few hours ago. And four months ago, I talked about uh, the opportunity of an Arbitrum airdrop, the ARB token. Now, a lot of people don't like airdrop videos because oftentimes they're very speculative than they can be. But if you get into an airdrop and you do the proper steps, you go through and you get involved in the ecosystem, it could be for a few minutes of your time every day. Um, it can mean a few hundred dollars or it could be thousands of dollars. The Optimism airdrop, thousands of dollars. The uh, the most recent one, I can't think of it, Aptos, APT token. Some people made five, seven thousand dollars in free airdrops on tokens. Yeah, of course, you have to pay taxes on those. But in the end, it's free money and it's a way to kind of boost the ecosystem. Uh, and so with the Arbitrum airdrop, it was somewhat speculative. And for those who spend a few minutes a day, well, it's going to pan out because uh, Arbitrum officially announced its airdrop Thursday. So yesterday they announced this. I'll have a full video on this tomorrow talking about the ARB token that is getting launched. Uh, in fact, there was $4 million worth of bets placed on whether or not <laughs> this would actually happen. And about $600,000 is going to be scheduled to be paid out to bettors on March 31st, as long as this goes through. So very interesting. Obviously, if you don't want to know more about Arbitrum, the potential airdrop, check out that video. I'll link it up here or over here, wherever it may show up. But uh, a lot of opportunity, especially if you're not familiar with Arbitrum, um, it's one of the largest layer twos on Ethereum. It's, it's really up there with Polygon, uh, a lot of projects, a lot of dApps built on Arbitrum. So that said, it is expected to be airdropped and there are already some major exchanges that are going to be listing the token for trading. That said, it's going to be extremely volatile and, and just be cognizant of the fact that more than likely for now, a professional trader, just maybe wait <laughs> because uh, there's going to be a lot of up and down potential. But um, you can see uh, Hyobi and MEXC are both going to be launching it uh, with USDT and USDD uh, with Tron's stablecoin. So just be aware that it is going to be listed right now. It is not listed. So if you see anything right now, it's not true. It's happening March 23rd. Like I said, full video on this tomorrow and just expect to have a lot of volatility. Now that speaking about layer twos, Maddox co-founder is leaving Polygon. Now it's not out of a, a sour note. It's not a, 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 you know, a goodbye. It's more of like a, a see you later. I'll work with you later kind of thing. So co-founder is leaving Polygon to work on a prior Polygon's project. So it was, it was a company or a crypto project that was part of Polygon Labs and Polygon Foundation called Avail. Um, so he is going to, yeah, that spun off and it will exist now on its own with him as the founder. So I, I don't think that, you know, with, with this specific individual, he is very um, important into a lot of the things that allowed Polygon to be where it is today. Be interesting to see if it impacts Polygon at all. I don't think it will. But uh, it'll be very interesting to keep an eye on Avail and see how that project progresses as well, knowing one of the individuals behind it having come from Polygon. So something to keep your eye on. But to the biggest news of today, and that is Silicon Valley's former parent company filing for bankruptcy. Obviously, it's to an extent, um, some people kind of expected this. It was uh, unknown, but 
Uh, their parent, former parent company, SVB Financial Group, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in the, uh, dis the bankruptcy court for Southern District of New York. So obviously, this is just a continual contagion spread that started initially with, Silver with Silvergate, then went to SVB, has now led to other banks as well getting involved in this domino effect, including Signature Bank and some others that had certain companies such as Circle, such as Ripple, some other very well-known companies in the space having a lot of their money in these banks because they were more crypto-friendly banks than others in the system. Now, that's also led to First Republic and Credit Suisse also in caught in the in the crossfire. So SVB and Signature set off a cascade amongst banks that haven't been handling their finances responsibly. So there was some stuff that came out yesterday as far as some of these banks having very high risk portfolios um, and a lot of people kind of showcasing some of the concerns that were raised with SVB and with other banks, Signature Bank, that are also very much reflected in these two banks as well. So as to whether this is going to cause more uh, contagion amongst other banks, more people focusing on the more regional banks, um, not necessarily your Wells Fargo or Bank of America specifically, but be interesting to see if this eventually gets plugged, if it gets stopped uh, and the bleeding stops, or if it's going to be a continual thing that we're going to be seeing for the next few months. So I'm not, no one's really for sure as to how much this continues to happen, but it is interesting. The FDIC denies a report that Signature Bank buyer must give up on crypto. So for those maybe not familiar, Signature Bank was very friendly to crypto companies. Now the FDIC reportedly stated that interested buyers in Signature uh, Bank must also give up their ties to crypto. Now the FDIC on their behalf says, hey, yeah, no, um, we did not uh, say that or we did not require that. So they responded to the publication saying that it would require divestment that it would that it would not require divestment of crypto activities as any part of the sale. Pointing to the previous comments from Chairman Martin Grunberg that the FDIC is not looking to prohibit any particular activity by banks. Initial reports that the FDIC was forcing signature banks buyer to buy abandon crypto activities appear to come from a to confirm suspicions that regulators targeted the bank because it did business in the crypto industry. So realize that there was some people that were tied to the bank that were claiming that the reason it was shut down was to send an anti-crypto message, was that it was shut down because New York regulators wanted to send a message to banks that they don't want banks dealing with crypto companies. So it's kind of where a lot of that spun out. And this whole regulation thing is now pushing Coinbase to consider primarily a lot of expansion overseas. This has been something that a lot of people talked about, whether this is just crypto in general, crypto mining, is because of how the U.S. is handling the regulation, it's pushing a lot of the technology and a lot of the advancements outside of the U.S. and pushing the tax dollars, the opportunities to other countries. So in, in essence, the U.S. is really hurting itself by pushing these companies to develop, to uh, innovate outside of the United States. And it's just hurting the U.S. economy or hurting the opportunity for the U.S. as economy uh, by doing so. And this is why companies, one of the larger exchanges such as Coinbase, considering overseas expansion. Coinbase saying that they've reached out to institutional clients about possible plans to set up a trading platform outside of the U.S. because, you know, they, they don't want to deal with the SEC and the overall regulatory body that's involved in the U.S. because the SEC doesn't even know what it's doing. It's just going left, left over right, or it's just going which way and another, and no one knows exactly what is accepted, what's not accepted. They're just going after anybody for anything, and obviously it's not great to have a company that is in the United States um, that is just doesn't know what to expect from regulation. So that's why they're looking to expand outside of the United States. So that being said, you know, overall, this this everything that's happened over this past week, uh, week and a half has has really pumped Bitcoin.
Bitcoin's up 32% in the wake of the banking crisis. It's been hitting day after day, hitting all-time highs, at least for the year of 2023, and hitting prior all-time highs from you know fall of last year. So it's been really, really good, and it's all on the heels of the Fed printing money because as in, typically when you see inflation on the opposite end, it's a good thing for Bitcoin because people would rather have their money in something that increases in value rather than decreases. It's very simple. And, you know, in essence, it, from a fiat standpoint and from a bank account standpoint, it's not great knowing the bank account or the dollars in my bank account are being devalued. But at the same aspect, you know, knowing that holding Bitcoin is is a better alternative uh, it just goes to show that in times like this, this is why Bitcoin was created, because you really just can't trust the banking system or the ability for the banks to just and the U.S. government to just print money. And then uh, last but not least, Arthur Hayes predicting Bitcoin to reach one million dollars by 2030 As obviously not the first person to say this. There's been other people. Uh, Arthur Hayes is a former CEO of BitMEX uh, saying that will reach a million dollars um and by 2030 you know there's been a lot of people that have come out and said something very similar 500,000 quarter million dollars by 2025 you know a lot of people come out with a lot of speculation but i'd love to hear your thoughts where do you see the uh, potential for bitcoin to be over a million dollars by 2030 do you think bitcoin is going to be at a quarter million dollars by 2025 right i'd love to hear your thoughts where do you think bitcoin will be in the next few years and in the next decade this brings you up to speed with everything happening right now. Enjoy the video, smash up the like, enjoy the content, consider subscribing. And until next time, guys, stay invested.